All right, I'll call the regular city council meeting Monday, September 21, 2015 to order. Clerk, call roll, please. Alderman Putoff. Here. Ferrari. Here. Waldorf. Here. Lacocious. Here. Bradke. Here. Mueller. Here. Sapienza. Payton. Here. Mayor Harrell. Here. I'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Chief Burnaby, would you call the new officer up? Yes, I will. Uh, Brad Anderson, would you please come forward? And Tanya, would you come up here also? Um, Mayor and members of the council and members of the public, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce to you um, and have a swearing-in ceremony. The mayor is going to swear in our newest police officer. Uh, as you recall, several months ago we had a police officer retired and we um, authorized the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners to hire a new patrolman. Um, just to kind of take a minute, please uh, bear with me. The Board of Fire and Police Commissioners is a civil service board. And under Illinois law, they uh, put out for applications uh, every two years to create an eligibility list for the position of police officer. Um, applications go all across uh, the area and generally we'll have anywhere from 75 to 100 people file applications. Um, typically we may have one opening um, or we may even advertise and say we don't have any openings but we're just establishing the list that's required by law. So we get these 75 or 100 applicants. We have very stringent um, educational requirements, um, significantly higher than what's minimally required by the state of Illinois. Um, the board uh, hires a testing company to come in and administer written examinations, uh, psychological examination, physical agility examination, um, polygraph examination, and then oral interviews. Um, so it's really important for people when they apply uh, to study, to pass all these other tests on a pass or fail, but the written exam plays a major role. Um, and somebody's got to be number one. Uh, this officer that we're going to introduce to you in just a minute um, was number one on his written examination. Um, he was then interviewed by the Civil Service Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, and he, uh, I believe he received the highest oral interview score um, that they ever received. Um, they uh, had just came out of the interviews and were just raving about this young man. Um, I had the chance to meet him um, after that and do my own interview, and I agreed that they really hit a home run with him. So um, we came to the council. You folks gave us authorization uh, to replace the retiring officer. The board hired uh, Brad. Uh, we sent him down to the police academy at the University of Illinois. Uh, he went down there June 29th for uh, 12 weeks of about 14-hour mm, days probably. Um, PT started at 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, where they, For those of you that know what PT is, I don't, but um, you run around at 5 o'clock in the five o'clock in the morning and then you go to class and then you take your lunch break and then you go to class and then you take your dinner break and then you go to class till 10 o'clock that night. He did that for 12 weeks, came back Friday night, early Sunday morning he headed back down there uh, for Sunday night uh, training. Uh, Brad was third in his class of 83 people. He was decimal points away on the academic score uh, from being number one. So. Uh, Clearly, he's got some uh, wonderful academics and just raving reviews from the uh, director of the Police Training Institute. So last Thursday, myself, the deputy chief, the commander, um, and three of our tr field training officers went down, had the graduation. Uh, we're very impressed um, and received some real, real nice comments about Brad. And, and uh, so now he's back. He starts 14 weeks of field training under certified field training officers. So from the day... Uh, we uh, sent him down to the academy. It's 26 weeks of training before he'll be out there on solo patrol. So Brad graduated Thursday from the police academy. Um, pretty smart guy. On Friday, this lady on his left became his fiance. They got engaged last Friday night. Um, so that's why you know, girlfriends don't come up here, but fiancés do. So, um, And she had the opportunity and was required to go down there for a counseling session um, with people to meet with families to let them know what it's like to be a police officer, uh, the wonderful things about it, and then sometimes the challenging things about it. So with that, uh, Brad Anderson, Brad's a local uh, 
grown, homegrown Illinois Valleyan. He's got an associate's degree from uh, Illinois Valley Community College. He's a state certified paramedic, um, and we're really excited to have him. So, Mayor, if you'd please swear Brad in. Okay, would you, would you stand right here and raise your right hand? Say I, state your name, and repeat after me. I, Bradley Anderson. Having been appointed to the Office of Police Officer in the City of Peru. Have been appointed to the Office of Police Officer in the City of Peru. County of LaSalle. County of LaSalle. In State of Illinois. In State of Illinois. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And all city ordinances. And all city ordinances. That I will faithfully discharge the duties that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of police officer to the best of my ability. Of the office of police officer to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to this. Once again, welcome aboard. While, while I'm up here, we do have a press release for the city of Peru that the city of Peru officials promote deer hunting safety. Peru Police Chief Doug Burnaby announced today that the Peru Police Firing Range will be open on Saturday, October 24th from 9 a.m. through 1 p.m. to deer hunters for sighting and test firing their shotguns in a safe environment for the upcoming deer hunting season. The open range is offered in an effort to promote hunting safety by giving hunters access to our range for the purpose of sighting in their shotguns. This will provide an opportunity for shotguns to be checked in a controlled environment with proof police firearms experts present along with a representative from Illinois Department of Natural Resources ensuring the safe and appropriate use of the shotguns. The open range program is the first time this program is being offered at the local level. This is a great program for hunters to make, their equip, make sure their equipment is in proper working order before going afield. I appreciate the Peru Police and their commitment to promote the safety of our sportsmen and sportsmen and women in our area. Targets will be, will be provided and there is no charge for the use of this range. Participants must possess a valid firearm owner's identification card, provide their own ammunition, and transport the firearm legally by having it unloaded and enclosed in a case. The open range program is not part of the concealed carry license program. Handguns will not be permitted on the range. The range is located on Tim Parra Drive off Route 6, just west of UPS and Peru's West End. Signs will be there to direct hunters. For those of you who haven't been to our shooting range, it's next to our West End wastewater treatment facility, and it's a, it's a wonderful facility. It's a beautiful facility. I think we will probably fill it up on Saturday, October 24th from 9 through 1. I've asked the chief to also expand and go into handgun and, and other training at the site sometime in the future so we can, we can promote gun safety and also show off our, our beautiful shooting range. So those of you who have never been down there, try and make it down because it, it's a wonderful facility. And those of you who will be hunting, go on down and, and sight in. So just wanted to get that out there. Thank you. Okay, was there any public comment cards? No, Your Honor. Do we have a motion for the regular meeting minutes to place Hold on file? Second, Second, Your Honor. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Do we have a motion to receive the reports and place on file? Uh, so moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. 
have a motion by Alderman Cutoff, second by Alderman Lukosius, to receive the reports and place on file. Is there any discussion? Uh, Your Honor, I just want to point out a couple items. Uh, from a sales tax point perspective, you see the city sales tax is up 5.4% over the previous year, up a few thousand dollars from June totals of 2014 to 2015. So that's a very uh, positive note from our reports. Also, you're seeing your reports from the gaming license. The state is still holding all of the fees for the gaming aspect. Uh, we're not sure when that will be released, probably the same time as the budget will be approved. So we won't hold our breaths for that money. Uh, that's all I had to say from the report standpoint. Okay, I'll, I'll add something to the report. We've discussed many times about our general fund reserves, and I think we've pretty much agreed to come up with at some point in time, we'll be at 180 days of reserve. Right now, we're closing in on, what, uh, 60, probably something like that. I would like for permission to ask the corporate council to put something together so we can, we have something that we can vote on. Because right now, according to the Treasury report, it's on a sign, about $2.2 .2 million, somewhere in that area, and, and I'd like to make sure that it, it's, you know, un, un restricted. So we'll put something together and then we can discuss what we have in front of us and then take action on it or change it or, or whatever. So do you have that, Corporate Council? <laughs> We've got it. We, we need to put the ordinance together for reserve for, for our general fund. Yeah. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all in favor, say bye-bye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Uh, we'll move on to committee. Finance, safety, services. Chairman Putoff. Uh, disbursements, uh, Alderman Racky. Yes, Your Honor. First thing is disbursements. Uh, total disbursements for February 23, 2015, are $3,806.59. I move that we receive that report, place it on file, and pay the bills in the usual manner. I'll second. I have a motion by Alderman Radke, second by Alderman Payton to receive the disbursements of over $3 million, place on file and pay the bills in the usual manner. This was a fairly large one and I asked finance officer a couple questions about it this morning. I know you have a, a couple minor things to say uh, about it as far as some of the disbursements and it's not the largest one we've had. But no, typically the largest ones are when we do the, the Parkside bond release, so it's usually a January combined with a, um, the IMEA bill. That'll be the largest usually then. It uh, doesn't always happen when they match up, but uh, some of the extraordinary items on disbursements this time, uh, $240,000 for Peoria Street, uh, $207,000 for water and sewer separation. Uh, additionally, the state has redid how we are uh, to rebate our sales tax. Uh, instead of them sending it directly to us, they send us a, a CD-ROM that's kept confidential, confidentially and that we run it in-house. But since it was the first time they were letting us have this information, it took a significant amount of time past uh, what the normal quarterly rebate is. So this is a larger rebate than typical. So it adds up to be about $650,000 in extraordinary expenses. And all the money is there. We're writing checks and paying the bill, right? Correct. Okay, is there any other discussion? Have a roll call vote, clerk call roll. Alderman Cutoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Pacocious. Aye. Bradkey. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Payton. Aye. Motion approved. Next, we have the approved voluntary ambulance service activity report for the month of August 2015. I'll make a motion to accept that report and place it on file. And I'll second. I have a motion by Alderman Ferrari, second by Alderman Payton to receive approved volunteer ambulance report and place on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, tonight, Your Honor, we have a motion to approve the annual membership to the Illinois Valley Area Chamber of Commerce in the amount of $3,000. I'll second that. I have a motion by Alderman Payton, second by Alderman Ferrari. To approve the annual membership to Illinois Valley Chamber of Commerce in the amount of $3,000. Is there any discussion? Your Honor, let me uh, kind of explain that a little bit. In the past, the city's paid approximately $14,000. Last year was $14,413 for a membership in the chamber. Uh, this year, in future years, they're changing a little bit of the requirements for the chamber. Uh, they're changing their points of direction and have lowered the fees to $3,000 for the city. 
in turn, the city will also be involved with a chamber initiative, which is called the North Central Economic Development Corporation. And what that is is a, a variety of private sector and also public sector cities are voicing their power together. And what they're working for is basically a regional concept for economic development. Uh, they're trying to make a big, uh, I guess, a bigger piece of the pie as far as recruiting industrial aspects for our community or our area. In turn, uh, the city has uh, verbally given the approval to be involved of that, and that cost would be $13,387. Uh, for the year. Uh, it's entirely a new area and I do uh, compliment them for reaching out to I guess get a better foothold on economic development for our entire area. Again that's made up of a lot of cities, uh, private development and things of that nature. Uh, we do have TJ Templeton who both represents the Chamber and also the Economic Development Group. He's here to answer any questions that the Council may have tonight. He came here. Please, somebody ask him a question. <laughs> TJ, do you want to come up and maybe just explain what uh, the, the new organization and how the chamber and that organization will generally work together and what their roles are both? And again, tonight we're not voting on the Proust commitment, but what we've done is we verbally have given an approval for that. Sounds good. Um, a little bit about each of them. IVAC has lowered their dues in support of the new regional economic development. We have re uh, lowered them about $11,000. That is across the board for all city members. They have all been lowered. It's depending on population and things of that sort for the chamber. When it comes to economic development standpoint, our new organization is basically they are looking to bring new business, retain the business we have, and expand the business we have. So we're looking at all aspects of trying to bring more jobs to this area. One of the major things that you'll see in council members, you've seen this in presentations and things like that, is it is very much a marketing effort as well. And there is no other entity anywhere in the three county radius that's going to have over $100,000 set aside just to bring jobs to the area. Some towns have economic developers, the chamber is going to be definitely involved, but nobody has that kind of money to put towards this, this effort. We are going to have three counties. We're going to have LaSalle, Bureau, and Putnam County. We have all the county boards on board. We have, as well as all the major cities in those three counties and are still looking at some of the smaller cities and things of that sort. Everybody is on board with this right now. The, the last piece of the puzzle is the city of Peru. You're our last one. We're, uh, we're hoping that you guys will join into this. It's a great movement. And one thing that we really stress on this is it's raising the tide of all the boats in the area. It's not just going to benefit one town because if you have residents in the city of Peru and something new comes to Spring Valley, you can bet your residents are going to go that way. And vice versa, if something new comes to Peru, you're going to catch a bunch of different zip codes. The Walmart distribution has over 100 different zip codes that work there. That's impressive, and that three-county area is definitely going to benefit from anything that comes into this area. The second part of it, too, is the fact that it's 150,000 people banding together. So if the city of Peru calls Springfield, you know, you're going to get some answers and some responses and things of that sort. You're big enough. You've got enough things going on. But maybe the county calls and you get a little bit farther. But when this economic development group calls or we call as a whole of 150,000 people, I think we're going to see a little better response from the state of Illinois. So trying to push in that region, I, I know all of you read this, that Rauner's big regional and things of that sort. We need to be regional. Everybody around us is regional. Will County's regional, DeKalb's regional, Bloomington Normal, Peoria, Quad Cities, I can go on all day. We're the last area that has not gone regional and, and it's definitely time for that. So that's just a real brief of, of where we're going and, and what we're trying to do. And, and the, focus, the focus of this organization is 100% manufacturing and industry. It's not focused 0% uh, on retail. Correct. We're, we would help if, if needed, if called upon to need. What this organization is going to do is it's outward facing. It is going to be out looking all over the country, all over the world for things to come to this area. Yes, we're going to look more manufacturing and industry, but we're not going to shy away from anything else. But we're not here to take anybody else's job either. All we want to do is give Mr. Vickery more leads and more things to do and more ways to help benefit Peru and benefit the whole area. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, we thank you for thanks, TJ, for yeah, all the hard work you've put in on this. Uh, coming and having nothing better to do than come here tonight. So. Thank you. 
uh, additional items from a finance committee standpoint. Uh, we need to do a, a, a roll call vote for the 3000 for IVAC. Alderman Puttoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Payton. Aye. Motion approved. Uh, additional items to the audit will be ready in about two weeks. What we'd like to do is when the audit is ready to call a public meeting and we will have uh, the auditors review with the general public and certainly with the city council all of the items uh, within that. Uh, we continue to talk about uh, gaming license discussions and uh, I think that will be on the agenda at our next committee meetings to discuss that a little further. Uh, that's all I had, Your Honor. Okay, we move public services, Chairman Walder. Uh, yes, sir. Alderman Lukosius, please. Uh, yes, tonight I have the electric financial report for the month of August 2015. And uh, during this period, we showed revenues over expenditures in the amount of $144,176.92. I'd like to make a motion that we accept this report and place it on file. I will second that, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Lukosius. I'm Alderman Waldorf. Receive electric finance report. Place on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Your Honor, I have the the um, City of Peru Revenue Expense Report uh, for the Water and Sewer Fund as of August 31st, 2015. Uh, this report shows revenues over expenditures in the amount of $41,554.94. I'll make a motion to receive this report and place it on file, please. Second, Your Honor. I have a motion by Alderman Waller, second by Alderman Mueller to receive water finance report and place it on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Next, Your Honor, I have the Peru Public Library cash account summary for the period ending August 31st, 2015. Total funds available are $482,129.16. I'd like to make, make a motion to receive this report, place it on file. I'll second that, Your Honor. I have a motion by Alderman Miller, second by Alderman Waldorf to receive Peru Public Library and place on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We also have uh, tonight, Your Honor, the Peru Recreation Fund cash account summary for the period ending August 31st, 2015. Total funds available are $58,257.16. I'd like to make a motion to receive this report and place it on file. Second, Your Honor. Have a motion by Alderman Mueller, second by Alderman Waldorf. Receive Peru Recreation Report and place it on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next, Your Honor, I have a discussion, hopefully approval of uh, Chamlin and Associates, preparation of a letter and questionnaire to homeowners in the 13th Street uh, floodplain. I'd like to uh, just explain this a little bit. We have uh, discussed it a couple of times in the uh, Public Services Committee, uh, the area along 13th Street. Some of the residents there are seeing their homeowner's insurance go to astronomical premiums per year in the tune of, uh, you know, $2,800 a year for homeowner's insurance. Uh, we've got some people that are trying to sell homes and they can't because of this uh, requirement uh, that had, would, that they're in this floodplain. And uh, anyway, we're going to try to uh, prepare a study and hopefully be able to get some information for these people to possibly get out of this floodplain. Uh, Eric and Mike, could you want to further elaborate on this? Yeah, um, as Jim touched on, we've been discussing this for a little bit now, and I think it's been historically discussed before within the city and the floodplain there on 13th Street. Uh, at this point, um, tonight what's on the agenda is for Mike and his group to issue a letter to the homeowners that are located within this area. And uh, I'd just like to turn it over to Mike to give a quick synopsis of what's all encompassed in that letter and what information these homeowners are going to be receiving from Chandler. Just for reference, a draft letter was included in the Alderman's packet, so most of them have seen it already. Very good. So I'll be uh, very brief, Clerk Bartley. Uh, in addition to the letter which Finance did see last Wednesday, the, uh, there is also now a questionnaire that Eric will share with you right after the meeting. And again, it's just basically a synopsis of the process to get the 1940 flood area updated to the current condition. Uh, it's 
about 40 to 50 years of improvements that have significantly reduced the uh, risk of flooding. And the study uh, will basically provide the homeowners, if they so choose, the opportunity to partner with each other and do the study, which is for their private insurance benefit. I'd just like to add to that, there was a nice article in the paper by Ben tonight on that too. The only thing I would ask is that if, there's, if there is enough interest <clears throat> that this goes, um, I did have one resident on the Sunset Drive area also, uh, because of the interest on 13th Street, he, he had mentioned, uh, well, can we do something like that up there? So if there is enough interest that this goes, I, I'd like to see maybe if there's a way to extend maybe a similar arrangement to that particular area of town, if that's possible. Okay, I have a motion by all of them in the closure, so I don't have a second at this time. Second, Your Honor. Uh, okay, we have a motion by all of them in the closure, second by all of them in Waldorf to discuss and approve the Chairman of Sophia's preparation letter. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Your Honor, also uh, on the agenda tonight, we have a uh, discuss and hopefully approve a purchase of one new 27-foot bleacher with a guardrail system in the amount of $4,599.95, and this is based on a recommendation of the Recreation Board. Ray, could you give us a little bit of a, a report on that? That This is the bleachers that are embedded in the, the asphalt? They're old? Yes, they're uh, old. Sorry, Ray, could you please come up to the mic so... For these meetings, we uh, we record and put them on the website. I don't know how um, exactly how old the uh, current bleacher set is there, but um, I'm guessing probably as long as I remember they had been there. Tony, you've coached over there. I know Steve has um, probably 20, 25 years. And just with the uh, the climate of the Midwest, you have a lot of thawing, freezing, the heat, the rain. Things shift, things deteriorate, and it's time for those to be uh, replaced. Um, I believe a big branch came down there too this past spring and, and fell on the fence and also right there by the bleacher area. And I, I think we're going to go to that park, if not this fall, next spring, to continue our tree trimming going from west to east. So that's going to help out. Anyway, uh, Going back to the bleachers, it's time for a new set there. And they are handicap accessible with the guardrails and the back. I think you guys all had pictures of it that were um, copied. But it's a very wise purchase. These, these bleachers are also, where, the, where they're in blacktop, they're also in railroad ties. So they're secured to some railroad ties. And we were looking at them, Russ and I went over and looked at them. You go to pull these out of here. It's, I don't think these bleachers are going to survive it anyway. Um, if they do, uh, I know they talk about possibly using the bleachers. If, if Russ can fix them and make them reusable and we'll take them to the southeast side and put them over there. They said they wanted some bleachers over there too. So if they're usable, we're going to move those over and we'll add more bleachers to the actual area. I'll make that a motion, Your Honor. I'll second that. Most Bob and Mueller, second Bob and Waldorf to approve the one new 27-foot bleacher for $4,599.95. Is there any further discussion? Have a roll call, roll call, call roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Boldorf. Aye. Kosius. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Payton. Aye. Motion approved. Anything further from public service? Uh, no, sir. Uh, report city attorney ordinances, resolutions. Yeah, the minutes from the plan commission hearing held on September 16th. The Planning Commission of the City of Peru convened for a public hearing on Wednesday, September 16, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. to consider the petition of Dull Estates LLC seeking rezoning of lots 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9 in Dull Estates LLC subdivision to the City of Peru concerning the real estate generally located along Cedar Lane, which is south of Shing Park Road and east of Sycamore Street in Peru. The petitioner seeks a rezoning classification for the property from an R2 single-family detached dwelling district to an R3 single-family and two-family residence district to allow for a duplex to be constructed on each of the said five lots. Gary Dahl and his wife Debbie were sworn on behalf of the petitioner 
they, they were seeking rezoning of these lots because they believed there was a demand for duplexes within the city. Um, they brought along a blueprint which they planned on uh, constructing one of these duplexes on lot two as a model. The duplexes themselves will be built to ADA standards. They'll be single story, constructed on a concrete slab with no basement, approximately 1,700 square feet in size, ADA features uh, throughout. Um, there was questioning about one of the lots, uh, lot 10, why that wasn't included on the petition to be rezoned. Uh, it's just an out lot. It's a smaller lot. He said it was too small. He was open, the petitioner was open to rezoning that as well. Um, the only objector present was Jason Miller. Uh, basically, he felt that uh, when he purchased his lot in Cedar Lane subdivision, um, he, he was attracted to the idea that they were all single family homes. Um, the plan commission unanimously um, uh, motioned in favor of recommending the R3 zoning classification with the inclusion of lot 10, that out lot also being rezoned with the idea that there'd be three duplexes on each side of the street. Okay, we have a motion to receive the minutes and place on file. So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. Have a motion by Alman Pollock, second by Alman Lukosius to receive the minutes and place on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Uh, be ordained that the recommended lots 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9 in Dulles States LLC subdivision be reclassified as R3 single family and two family residence district under the City of Peru zoning ordinance. I have a motion to receive the ordinance placed on file? So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. I have a motion by Alderman Pollock, Alderman to receive the ordinance and is written and read and placed on file. Is there any discussion? A roll call vote, court call roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Payton. Aye. Motion approved. Anything further? That's all I have. Okay, unfinished business. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Tonight I'd like to make a motion to hire the selected candidate for the position of apprentice lineman. Second, Your Honor. Do we have a motion by... Alderman Lacosha, Sigma Alderman Waldorf, to hire a selected candidate for position of apprentice lineman. Is there any discussion? Well, this, this is a position in anticipation of the retirement based on the long training cycle for an apprentice of anywhere from one to five years, right? That, that is correct. Okay, we have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, we'll have a roll call vote. Clerk, call roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Payton. Aye. Motion approved. Any other unfinished business? Any new business? Yeah, can we look into getting microphones for each one of you gentlemen out here so they don't have to keep passing them back and forth? I will look into that. Thank you. Okay. Any other new business? Microphones? Okay, we'll move on to petitions communications. Yes, Your Honor. The first communication is from the Recreation Board requesting permission to hold their annual Halloween parade on October 24th at 145, starting at Rotary Park and requesting fire department and police department assistance. I believe they're talking about finishing the parade this year at Washington, Washington Park. Park. Activities. I'll make a motion that we allow that um, as long as there's nothing um, conflicting. I will second that, Your Honor. I have a motion by Alderman Waldorf, second by Alderman Mueller to receive the communication from the Recreation Board for the Halloween parade on October 24th, 145. And grant permission. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Next, I have a communication from Danielle Thompson requesting permission to hold a wedding ceremony on the west side of Baker Lake on Friday, May 13th, 2016. Um, there is a conflict on that date 
which the person requesting has been made aware of, the fishing rodeo, I think is the following day. So uh, she's aware of that, and we explain that there may be some other, you know, vehicles parked or preparation for that, and she understands and still is interested in having it on that day. I'll make a motion with granted permission to have it then. And I will second that. And there really is nothing that goes on on the west side of Baker Lake on that Friday. We we set up on the east side of Baker Lake and uh, shouldn't shouldn't be a problem for us. Okay, we have a motion. A motion by Alderman Ferrari, a second by Alderman Mueller to receive the communication and grant permission. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Your Honor, I have one more communication. Uh, came from St. Bede, would like to invite the city and any other city vehicles to participate in their Celebrate Our Spirit 2015 Homecoming Parade on Thursday, October 1st at 6 p.m. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, and would we like to get our float in that parade or send a police or fire vehicle? Okay. It is at 6 p.m., so they're going to line up at 5 p.m. I, I know it's a quick thing, but I can send in the entry and the name of who's riding and if there's any alumni involved with the entry. Okay, do we have a motion to receive place on file and instruct the clerk to to inform them that we will have a float in the parade? Okay, I don't know who... who Alderman Mueller made the motion. I don't know where the second came from. Alderman Radke, to receive the communication and instruct City Clerk Bartley to to let them know that we'll have a float in that parade. Is is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carried. Is there any others? No, Your Honor. Okay. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? Anything about anybody have to say anything about our new police officer? Apparently, he's very intelligent. The way he scored. He's Oldsby Fire Department. Seemed like a very nice young man. Okay. Any other public comments then? We got new police chief and new fire chief all on the same night. Okay, is is there any need for another closed session? Motion for adjournment? Second. We have a motion by Alderman Waller, second by Alderman Ferry. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, being adjourned.